Hey y'all, DB here. Today, I got something a little different and uh, something that I wanted to share with y'all. And that is Travel Battle, Complete War Game in a Box by Perry Miniatures. Um, this is something that came out a few years ago, I think. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that's, that's dope. DB would like. Um... But I wasn't able to get it right away. Something happened. I forget what it was, to be honest with y'all. Um, but I have always kept it in my mind that I wanted to get a copy. And finally, around Christmas time, DB decided to treat himself. And that's what he did. And it actually came the other day. So I want to just open it up and show y'all. Um, I opened it up. I read the rules. Um, I didn't pop the sprues yet because I wanted to show you guys what it entails. So we're going to open it up here real quick. Um, it comes in this like nice carrying box, dude. You know what I mean? A little plastic handle there. But you fold in. You open up. Got a nice little foam piece here. And then boom. We got us a game, y'all. Um, I'm going to put the rules right here for a second because I want to show you everything that's in here. Um, so, first of all, it comes with some sprues. These are bases for the various dudes. Green bases. And these are trees um, that you don't actually glue on. I believe they just fit on top of the hexes. And that way you can move them around. Because you'll see, this is actually like pretty cool. It's like uh what do you call it it reminds me a lot of kids games but whatever i digress um something interesting as as i've gotten older my grognar tendencies have led me towards napoleonics um i've always thought napoleonic stuff was cool but was never really into it, it was mostly fantasy sci-fi that sort of thing and then as i get older the historical stuff Outside of World War II, I've always been into that. Kind of gets me more. Um, these are your sprues. You have a couple different things on here. You have an artillery piece. You have some cavalry dudes. You have uh, some officers and some line infantry. And then, so the blue team, we'll call them the, the France. Viva la France! La Francaise! These dudes are really small. I'm not sure um, what the actual scale is. Um, so, yeah. They were actually made in England. 2017. How about that? Way to go, Perrys. Um, very small. I believe there is a heavy cavalry... And a light cavalry, if I remember, due to the rules. I forget. I got to double check. I'll double check. I'll go through it with y'all. And then we have the same sprues, but only in red. That way, if you don't want to paint your stuff, you have a, um, you can actually play straight out of the box. You know what I'm saying? And then here we have some buildings. You just have to cut them out. And uh, they actually have. Um, little knobs on them so they're really easy to glue um, the rule book says you glue them down on top of here and that makes sense because if you look here some of them have fences and stuff and this is the unique thing to me that I thought was pretty cool is it comes with these two plastic boards they're a foot by a foot if I'm not mistaken one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah they're about a foot I'd say they're about a foot and then they match up almost any way due to the road features on them. So it's going to give you, um, I'm bad at maths, even though TB used to be an accountant, uh, it's going to give you a myriad, I will say a myriad of possibilities as to setting up the battlefield. And it'll look pretty dope. Once you put some roofs on here, uh, you don't have to paint it. I'm probably going to paint parts of it. Is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'll paint the roads. I'll paint the buildings. And these. Uh, what do you call this? A fence or a wall. This wall here. And I will paint these farm fields. Uh, because I think those would look nice brown. You have some hills. You have some raised terrain here. And it's very dope that it fits right back into here. And this whole thing. You're going to put your army. 
in here, your blue dudes and your red dudes. And literally you got this whole thing in a box. And this is actually pretty, pretty sturdy plastic. I mean, if I was really wanted to snap it, I could, but um, it should hold up very well, you know? And then you know what's next, y'all. Dice! And unlike most people, the Perry Bros must appreciate dice because these are some nice dice. Rounded corners. Ten and a five. Clearly the French. Um, let's take a look at the rules, y'all. So the rules are really easy. You have six troop types. Brigadier, heavy cavalry, light cavalry, infantry, guard infantry, and artillery. And they match red and blue. So they're the same. Um, so, and your rules right here, this is, tells you the movement and the special abilities, if they have any. At the start of the game, you're going to divide your troops up into three brigades, however you like. And it gives you some examples of how to do that. And you play with two brigade, two or three, there's three, yeah, three brigadiers. So, and then it tells you how to, uh, how to set up the board here. Like, glue stuff on. Do not glue the treetops on because you remove those to put infantry in the woods and stuff. And then it gives you your sequence of play. Each player chooses a board. You roll a D6 to which, C, which side of your board faces you. You push them together. There you have your battlefield. Then you pick your armies into three brigades. Roll a dice to see who places the first brigade. Alternate place. Roll a dice to see who moves first. One guy moves all of his units. Fires his artillery and rolls for effect with the artillery. He then fights if any of his dudes are touching the other guy's dudes. Whoa. Touching the other guy's dudes. You know what I mean. And then player one turns around any units pushed back in the previous turn. Basically, they rally. And then player two repeats the last four procedures. Basically, moving, shooting, and attacking. This gives you some examples of setup. Movement, uh, it's really easy. Infantry and artillery only move one square. Cavalry brigadiers move two. Brigadiers are your officers, for those who don't know. Roods, roods, roads add one square to movement if the unit starts and ends on a road. And you can move diagonally as far as backwards and sideways. Gives you a little uh, paragraph on artillery here, how that works. It's slightly different. Basically, you roll a d6. And if the guy is in a woods or a building, it's minus one to your roll. One, two, three, nothing. Four, the unit can't move next turn. Five, the unit moves back to its board edge and must roll the dice to rally. If it fails, it's removed. And then six, you're just straight up blasted, y'all. Blasted. Then it goes through fighting. Basically fighting the uh, quick and dirty as you roll a D6 for each guy in base to base. And then you compare. And depending on the difference, it's almost like artillery. You move back one square and turn your guy around. Two, you move back to the board edge and have to rally. And three, you're just toast. Uh, rally is pretty easy. You roll one dice, four, five, or six, you're good. Uh, guard is guard infantry since they're uh, elites, basically. They roll on a three or higher. And artillery is five or six. Uh, the square is you can do a square and it's just an infantry formation to defend from cavalry you can do it if you don't move and it takes one turn to reform out of the square so and the square the benefit that is is uh i forget it's in it's in the fighting page uh, ba, 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 ba. infantry not in cavalry fighting only infantry not in square rolling additional dice Infantry and square formation fighting only cavalry roll an extra dice. And if you lose both of your officer brigadiers, you lose the game. That's pretty much it. And then they give you a little thing about how to paint stuff that makes it look super easy. But as tiny as these dudes are, that's fucking nuts. You know what I'm saying? And then on the back, it tells you how to paint the terrain, which is pretty cool. And then it shows you the original, um, their original prototype. So, yeah. All in all, I'm pretty excited for the travel battle. Um, I'm going to pop this dude out of his sprues, cut him out, glue my buildings together, and set it all up. 
uh, because DB does a lot of traveling up and down, the, well, mostly up 95 to the No Feast, and uh, with the kids and the dog, it's tough for me to bring a lot of stuff uh, when I go north to either see friends or see the folks or whatever, and we re I rely on what is already up there or what my buddies have and everything like this. And I also thought this was simple enough that I could play with the kiddos, which I think it is. Uh, the pieces are a little small, that worries me. Um, but you know, also comes in the nice box, everything, all in all, nice treat for myself uh, that I had been looking for for quite a while. So I'm, I'm actually sized, man. I'm, 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 I'm ready to rock some Napoleonics. Uh, outside of this, the only Napoleonics I really play are Command and Colors. Uh, like that. Big fan of that. But I have some random Perry Brother Napoleonic miniatures that I probably got for free in War Games Illustrated. And those I mostly use for Silver Bayonet, y'all. So... But this cost me, what did I pay for this? To let you guys know. I think it was 54 bucks. I think I paid 54 bucks. Got it online. Been looking for it for a while. Always kept my eye on it. Thought it was a fair and decent price to do Napoleonics. Slide it under your car seat and always be ready to rock and roll. You know what I'm saying? Be good to one another. Do what you feel.